In this example, I'll show you how to create a steel bridge model with three spans. I'll start by checking the general options. We will work in 2D because we will analyze only a band containing one girder of a three span bridge. Then, I'll just make sure that the units are properly selected. We will work with the default metric units for this example. Then we will start the geometry. The existing grid has a spacing of 1 meter by default. Let's choose a custom grid spacing. I'm going to create three vertical lines along X with a spacing of 28 meters each. I will then edit them to have a central span of 36 meters. For the horizontal lines along Y, I'm going to edit the existing lines and erase them all except one because they will not be required. Now we will look at the overview of the structure we can see the three spans corresponding to the grid. So, the next step will be is to create the corresponding members using the add member command. To deactivate this command, press escape on the keyboard. The next step will be to assign the vertical supports and horizontal supports to the entire structure. I'll use the joint attributes command to first assign a vertical support to all joints. Then, for the two central joints, I will also add supports along X. At the next step, we will select the entire bridge to associate a new section. So, in this case, it could be a standard steel section. The profile we will select is WWF 1800 by 575. Now, I will add the section. Then, I will close the window and I will associate the section to the structure. Now the yellow lines we see here are the cross sections associated with the members. Now we will add all the loads. I'll first create the basic loads. So, we will have a first load that will be the self weight. A second load that will be an additional dead load. And the third will be a moving load. Subsequently, we will activate here the weight on the structure. We choose the basic load number 1 with a minus 1 factor in the negative global y axis. That being said, the gravity load has been activated. Now I will go ahead and add a new uniformly distributed load across the bridge. This will be the additional dead load which will be a minus 40 kilonewton per meter and then I will click add. Therefore, the creation of the geometry is now complete. Now it remains to apply the parameters for the moving loads. First, let's check the selected code. This will be the S606 code. We will then adjust the lateral distribution coefficients. In this case we assume that it is a girder bridge with only two longitudinal girders. It is a bridge that will have three lane loads with a total width of 12 meters, a spacing between the two beams of 10 meters, and a cantilever of 1 meter. 
The values shown here are displayed on the figure. The minimum edge distance, the DVE, is 600 millimeters and the width of the truck is 1800 millimeters. So we can see here the calculated lateral distribution coefficients to be used in this situation. I'll click on the link here, set the used values so they will be used for the three spans of the bridge. We can click OK to continue. Now for the trajectory. We will find a default truck step of 300 millimeters and the truck will move in both directions either from left to right or from right to left. So from that end to the other end, then the truck is turned around and travels in the other direction, which allows you to get a symmetrical force envelope. Then the truck load will be applied to all three spans of the bridge. We will specify a path from the beginning of the bridge at zero until the end of the bridge at 92 meters. We will then associate a name trajectory number one. Now we will go and add a new standard truck. So to create a new standard truck, you simply need to add a new tab. Select the associated basic load, the path on which will move the truck. Here we choose CL1-625A truck. So it's a design truck passing on a road class A. Now we have a truck that has axles that can be raised where the dynamic load allowance changes according to the number of active axles on the bridge. To complete the model, we will create the load combinations. We will create a simple load combination for this example, having a 1.2 factor for the dead load, one5 factor for the additional dead load and 1.7 factor for the moving load. The modeling of this model is completed. There is a command called verify input data. If there is something obvious the user forgot, the software will indicate it. If we look a little closer to the truck that was generated, you can see here the truck is positioned on the bridge with spacings of 300 millimeters. Here we see the loading position of each axle and the first axle at the beginning of the bridge. We are now ready to run the analysis. I will go ahead and launch the moving load analysis. To continue, we will go into the Bridge Results tab. To visualize the efforts caused by the truck, I need to click here and check what kind of effort I want to see. In this case, we will choose the bending around Z, MZ. The effort envelope graphic scale is a little too large, so I'll go make the change in the graphical display options. We have to go into the Scale tab and click on Analysis. For the bending results, we will associate a scale of 250 kilonewtons displayed as one meter on the screen. By selecting the lane option, I can see the effect of the lane load and the truck simultaneously. We can see that the truck load is more critical almost everywhere except perhaps at the interior supports. Normally, we can choose the envelope of the two, which is the most critical of the two curves. Also, we can also visualize the shear on the beams. We can change the scale in display options menu by adjusting the shear forces that will be displayed as 250 kilonewtons per one meter on the screen. I will go back to the bending curve envelope. We can see that the moment bending curve is a bit irregular. To obtain a more precise bending moment envelope curve, there are two possible approaches. 
The first is to increase the number of divisions of each beam while launching the analysis. We can see that the curves are smoother and therefore more precise. If I wanted to display the vertical displacements of the bridge, there would be no results because the displacements are calculated at joints when a moving load analysis is performed. We need to create intermediate joints to see the displacement of the beams. To do so, we will subdivide the selected members with this command. Each member will have 10 divisions. We will launch the analysis again, but before, we can reduce the number of divisions back to 10 for the analysis. Along the bridge, we can effectively visualize the vertical displacements and every other results previously shown. This part of the window allows us to view the unfactored truck loads. The second part allows us to consider the effect of different types of loads such as the self-weight or the additional dead load, still unfactored. Finally, you can see the factored envelope curves of cumulative bending moments on the entire structure in this part of the window. So, here, I will open the combination menu and select the load combination to be displayed. We will select the moment, MZ, and click on Apply. Again, the display scale can be adjusted. These results are also available in the form of a table. They can also be viewed by means of graphics. The graphical tables are very precise as we can scan the results along multiple positions on the beam. I could select the combined effort envelopes as they are displayed on the current screen and I'll show the same bending moment curve on the physical member that corresponds to the first span. We find the same curves but, more accurately, as it can fetch each value along the member. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit our website at www.safi.com.